Hello, and welcome to the Musician's Notepad, how to set up a drum set for band director's guide. So often when I go into band rooms, I see drum sets that are set up like this. The toms are kind of winged out, the cymbals are kind of crammed in in a weird spot. Uh, everything in this kind of second row, or the row that's closer to you, is kind of like flattened out in this weird way. And everything's not exactly easy to get to. It's, it's in a way that it feels like everything is ergonomic, but it really makes it hard to get around the drums. It's easy for one or two drums, but not for all of it. One of the main things I see a lot is if you've built a riser for your drum set, and I've seen a fair amount of band directors do this, uh, they often use a four by eight sheet of plywood, and usually that four foot depth is about six inches too shallow, and so we kind of have to condense everything into a weird spot. What I think you should consider doing is instead of rebuilding it or getting rid of your riser if you really like having a riser, what you can do is you can turn your drum set on that riser and have it sit a little more diagonally. Uh, that way you use more of the space. So first thing when you're setting up a drum set is that you have to make sure that the bass drum is square to the performer. And the way that I think of that is that I pick a line that the bass drum sits on and then my torso has to go parallel to that and my right leg is absolutely perpendicular to that. So if I'm being square to this bass drum, I am right here where my bass drum is right there, my torso is right here, and my leg is a straight line into that. From there, I need to move my snare drum in right next to the pedal. The way I usually end up having to do that is where I put, I place the two legs of the tripod snare drum stand in line with the with the bass drum pedal. So I've got two of those legs very close to that that pedal and that usually keeps everything in a an easy to play place. Up until now I haven't worried about placing my hi-hat. To find the correct spot for it, what I do is I just slide the pedal underneath where my foot is. By doing that, everything is now in just a very comfortable place. My legs are comfortable, and where my hands need to be are very comfortable as well. The toms are often winged out in this odd way, and it's to make it easier to reach them. Uh, most of the drum sets that I still see in band programs have very deep toms, kind of a hangover from the 90s, uh, when all the intro and intermediate level kits kind of had these very deep toms. We got into this pattern of kind of winging them out to try and make them easy to reach. The issue is that it is very ergonomically hard to get around the kit, so I'm gonna make two suggestions on that. One is just to set them up in a more correct way and then your students are going to have to reach for them. To do that, you wanna make sure that they are on the same plane as each other. That doesn't mean that they can't be angled. You can angle them, but they should be angled together. You don't want them to V into each other. That makes it very hard to kind of go into one, bounce way over onto the other, and then off onto the floor tom or wherever else you're going. Here we have them much higher up, but angled the same, so that when you get up to them, you can move around them easily. The other option is to lower them slightly farther than this and have them more flat. I'll show you that too. So here they're lower down to the drums, but they're a little harder to get up to. You really have to play flat across them to get to them. Another option, because most of you are doing this because of a jazz band situation, is to go with only a four-piece setup and just lose one of these toms. That usually allows you to kick the tom over farther and actually keep it lower and make it easier to hit. Let me show you that. So far we've been dealing with the pearl style L tom arms. The other thing that you might have is a single post with two hooks coming off of it. The more, uh, we'll say Ludwig style or Yamaha style uh, tom mount. You should have similar abilities with them. This one, the pearl style, will let you kick this tom out a little farther if what you do is you take the L arm and you flip it the other way. So the short end goes in the uh, tom mount on the bass drum and the long end goes into the drum itself. I'll show you that here. So 
So now that Tom is in a much more comfortable place to play, you don't have to worry about getting over to the other Tom up here and how awkward that is, and you can do a more natural flow from here down to here, uh, to your floor Tom. Quite often the floor Tom gets kind of pushed way off to the side. You want to bring the floor Tom in nice and close so that your leg fits into a small channel in between the snare drum and floor Tom so you can go right from one to the next. That creates this nice triangular flow. And then actually when you bring your ride cymbal in, right in that spot, you can get it closer if you don't have the extra Tom and have it right there. So you've kind of got this same positioning going on all through. And now the conundrum of the crash cymbal and the music stand. I'm a big advocate of actually in a school jazz band situation, or even if I'm playing with a big band, I often don't place a cymbal right here. If I really think I need a cymbal over on my left side, I might put it on the other side or on top of the hi-hat, but I try to keep it out of this gap here because that's where I like to put my music stand because usually I'm oriented forward looking through my music stand at my director. I often will suggest to take this cymbal stand and actually put it over here on this side because most of the time when a student needs to lean into it, it puts the cymbal closer to them and thus is easier for them to get to. Now if I need to get to that crash, it's right there. I can go ahead and take my music stand. I'm looking right through this stand to my director. And that's what I like about putting it there. I'm gonna move it out of the way so I can talk to you now though. And that's basically it. You just want everything in and close and easy to play with. Now, I know as a director, you can sit down at the beginning of the year or the beginning of the week or the beginning of the day and it's gonna be completely different by the time you leave. That's okay. The point is that students need to know what this setup is like and they need to feel free to change it. It's very important that a student feels free to change anything about the set to make it easier to play. They just need to know what that easier to play setup feels like. Because when they don't, they make all these little changes and it becomes, I need this time to be easier to hit so it gets pushed here and, oh, I need to be closer so I need to move my snare drum and all these things get changed around and they don't think about the big picture. So if you can get them to think about the big picture and how to make everything fit into the big picture, and I know that's easier said than done, then they're gonna know how to arrange a drum set and they're gonna feel confident when they sit down about playing it. Notice that I didn't say anything about heights. Heights are gonna be different for every single student. They need to know that they can make height adjustments wherever they can to make things easier to play. That's one of the big things they need to feel comfortable with. You also, as a band director, need to make sure that you have an easily adjustable snare drum stand for height. You also need to make sure that you've got an easily adjustable seat, uh, a throne as us drummers call it, um, because we're vain. Uh, but yeah, you need to make sure that you've got an easily adjustable throne that works. I hate to say it, but buy the expensive one. Um, if you can, go for the hydraulic one, the really pneumatic one. But the idea of the one that just goes you know, up and down with the lever. The reason being is that you've got a lot of students coming in and off and everyone's going to need to make those adjustments. It's going to make everything easier. So now you might be looking at your drum set and thinking, well, maybe I should get a new one. And that's a distinct possibility. But what I really want to urge you to do is to make sure that you consult either the person that you have come in and do clinics or the person that you recommend for private lessons or if you've got a good relationship with a local shop, make sure they're a drum shop. I know a lot of you obviously have deals with, uh, you know, band instrument shops, woodwind uh, shops and brass shops and people that do that. Make sure that you've got someone who really knows drums come out and take a look at what you've got. Quite often I see band directors take a kit that might be old and beat up but really just needs a set of heads and maybe a stand or two and you know essentially a couple hundred dollars of maintenance because it's you know 15 years old uh, and they go and they spend a thousand dollars on a new drum set that's a lateral move. You know they buy essentially the same drum set again as opposed to upgrading. And if you're ready to upgrade, honestly, you should think about a drum set the way you think about a nice instrument. I understand that they seem very expensive, but you guys also know how expensive nice instruments can be. Uh, I, I know that it's a lot of money when I say you should spend $2,500 on a drum set and a set of cymbals. The fact is you could even spend more than that, but you know, the idea is spend the money, get a good drum set, and again, consult your local players, consult your clinician or your lesson person or your shop so that you can get a, a good kit that will last a lot of years. You want something that sounds good and is built well. Um, don't be afraid to replace the heads. That can be expensive, yes, 
but good heads make a drum set sound good. Keep them in tune. Um, there are plenty of videos out there on, on tuning drums. Uh, or have your, again, have your clinician and have people come in to work on these things. I do that quite often where uh, I go into clinic and I get an extra hour of pay because I sit in and I fix up their percussion stuff in the downtime. So make sure that uh, you are, you know, maintaining your stuff and make sure that you're talking to people about uh, what, you know, what you need uh, on your drum set. So, thanks for watching. I hope I've answered all your questions. I hope you've got a good setup going now. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me or leave a comment or send a tweet. Uh, other than that, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Make sure to download the, uh, the companion uh, the companion handout as well about this. That can totally help out. It has a couple tips on it uh, just in real time as you're working on stuff. So, uh, like I said, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Let's hit it.